Well, uh, <coughs> thank you, Bill, um, and thank you for inviting me to uh, come all this way. Um, the OECD is based in, in Paris, which is in France rather than Texas, um, <laughs> and, um, and you can tell from my accent that I'm, I'm French. Um, <laughs> but um, I and. Uh, um, and I'll try and stay awake because I'm suffering a bit from jet lag, but, um, but there we are. Um, data publishing at the OECD, uh, sort of past, present, future, it's a bit, bit pompous, there we are. Um, we have more data that you can shake a stick at. Um, uh, we have 800 data sets, we think. Um, it's a bit difficult to know how to count data, but we have, we have loads of data. Um, and uh, um, it's, it's socioeconomic data. If you don't know what the OECD is, it's a horrible acronym. It stands for the Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development. Um, we are owned by 34 governments, um, so we do research on behalf of, uh, of gov governments. We're often known as the, as the Rich Man's Club because all of our members are, um, are, 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 are allegedly rich countries. We have members like Greece, Portugal, Spain, uh, the United States, um, the UK, uh, and other, other countries that are, that are supposed to be rich. Um, uh, what we do is we do research these, these, these uh, governments um, in all fields of, of government except defense, because uh, that's called NATO. Um, and, but we don't do bombs, we just do, do the research. And unlike the World Bank or the Fund, because we're also put in the same category as the World Bank and the Fund, we don't lend money. Um, we, just, we just do research. Um, and one of the big things we do is we gather data, and, and we have, that's why we have so much data. The data then is used uh, in, in the research. And so we publish um, both the data sets and the analysis that goes with the data. Um, and I'll be showing you um, how we actually combine the two um, in this presentation. Um, as Bill said, um, we have to publish for everyone's benefit. And um, one of our, our, um, uh, our sort of mandates, I, I only have two mandates. Um, one is I have to make the OECD's content accessible to everybody um, for free. And the other mandate is I have to uh, raise enough money to pay for the cost of publishing. Uh, so it's, it's a very simple job. Um, and, and one way or another, we seem to, we seem to pull it off. Um, and, and through this presentation, you'll see how, um, I hope, how we, we, we um, one of the biggest challenges is to make the, co the, 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 the data accessible to everyone. Um, and that, and that, is, um, that is hard. Um, oh, by the way, sheep will, will keep on appearing in this presentation. Um, that's because um, I was brought up on a sheep farm and I tend to see everything in, in sort of sheep ways. So it, it's, it's, just, <coughs> it's just one of those things. Right, who needs our data? So this is a boring slide. Um, these are the people who, who need our data. We know this because we talk to them. Um, so we have policy advisors, um, so people who work for important people like prime ministers and presidents, and, um, and they, the typical task, they want to prepare a speech, um, they want to write a, a, a report for, for a minister or something like that. So that's, uh, that's one set. The policy advisor tends to be a pretty non-technical person, um, but they want to get access usually quite quickly to the data. You have business analysts um, working, you know, for PricewaterhouseCoopers or one of those those sort of en uh, entities, and they want to give a sort of client business advice. Then there's the the researchers, the statisticians. Um, so these are the sort of the geeks of the of the data world, and um, they want to crunch data. Um, they really want the data in as rawest possible form so that they can do cool things with it. Um, and that's uh, another group. Then we have university librarians uh, and other librarians. Um, and basically, uh, it's all about helping people, helping people with data queries. Um, but that's, uh, that's quite a big uh, user community. We have journalists. Um, they crawl all over our data um, because they want to write a story or they want to, um, to, to support a, a piece that they're writing. And increasingly now, they want to um, create a graphic, an infographic that goes in either online or in, in the media. Um, so that's another use. Then we have the, uh, the NGOs and citizens with a cause, as we call them. Um, these are people who tend to, you know, stand outside G8 meetings and make a lot of noise. Um, but they want data to support their arguments. Um, so uh, we, we have to provide a, a service for them. Then there are students. Um, it's really interesting looking at our usage figures. Every Sunday evening, the <laughs> usage goes up. Um, and we know why. It's, it's, the, it's that deadline for the essay tomorrow morning. So the students, they need access uh, to the data. Then the data uh, aggregators and resellers, people like Bloomberg and Thomson Reuters, they want our data so that they can aggregate it with other data they've got to provide uh, services um, to the financial sector or to other business uh, communities. 
And then a new group um, that's emerging, which are developers. Um, these are the people who want to build an app or, or make a visualization. Um, so a lot of different types of, of user. Um, people who want to use our data. Um, we've just done some research with all these people um, to, to, to build up the user case so we can better understand their needs so we can build, be build better tools um, for them. What do they really, really want? Um, this is what they want. They want to be able to find, understand, use, and reuse our data. Um, it's, it, that, that's, that's, that's fundamentally what they want. The biggest, biggest challenge is the find. Um, when you have 800 data sets, it's really, really hard to find the data set that you, that you need. Um, and, um, and, and this is, this is something that we, that we keep on trying to work on. We still haven't got it sorted out. People still call us, um, which is a sign of failure, um, because they can't find the data set that they, that they, that they really, really want. Um, the other problem is that uh, we still haven't got people citing data properly. Um, people grab our data, they put it into a, a, a paper that they write, and they put source OECD, which is really useful when you have 800 data sets, because then the next user can't find it. Um, so we have a citation tool, no one's using it, there's a real behavioral uh, problem here, trying to get people to cite data, um, it, it, it's not happening yet. So how do we publish for everyone? So we add a little value, okay, so um, colored cheap. Um, because not all data is the same, um, we, we have to add a little value. So this is what we do. Um, so we have data sets. So the analogy here is the, um, you, you shear a sheep and you end up with the raw wool. Okay, so this is the raw data. And so we have various services that allow you to, to, to shear our, 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 our data warehouse and you get the data that you want and that, that's it. We haven't done anything to the data, you've got the raw data. Um, we have various ways of delivering that. We still do CD-ROMs, amazingly, because people still want them. Um, we have an online browser. Um, it's the, the .stat thing, we, brand that we now have. It replaced an earlier brand, brand that we have in 2001. We de de developed um, .stat in about 2006. And then we also um, do machine to machine. There's a, a data exchange uh, format called SDMX that we developed with the World Bank and the UN and others, um, which is a way of, of machine to machine exchange of statistical data. Um, and in 2014, uh, we hope to launch an API um, that's, that's sort of simple enough for, for people to use to be able to uh, suck out our data uh, directly from the data sets and set up live feeds on, on, onto your, your site. So that's the raw data service um, that's, that's, that's um, available now. This, in fact, is the oldest service we have, um, which is uh, data annuals. In, in the old days before there was online, um, uh, we would uh, we would print books full of data. I mean, they're, they're the most boring books you can find. I mean, they're literally just tables. Um, and uh, they were in print. Um, we launched them in PDF in 2000. We thought that was really cool. Um, and, and this is where, in a sense, we, we, we've, it's the ball of wool because we've processed the data. It, it's still just wool, but it, we, we put a bit of color to it and we've processed it so you don't have to, to actually do the processing yourself. Um, but basically, it's, it's ready-made tables so that you don't have to build a table yourself. Um, in 2010, we started publishing these as, as Excel files as well, so that you can actually imp you know, start to play this straight away rather than just being on PDF. Um, 2012, we moved the print to print on demand. Um, we're one of the few statistical agencies that still make printed statistical annuals. Most of the other agencies have stopped doing them, which I think is a big mistake because we get very high usage of these because we've done the work to make a ready-made table. And, uh, and last year we launched a, an HTML5 version, so it, the, these tables are now readable on, on smartphones and, and, um, and tablets. So that's the, and these, both these two services really are for, for data experts, uh, for students and for researchers, that they're not for, for, for people like me. Um, that's really um, what it's for. And then we, we make jerseys. Um, so we make, uh, we actually knit the, the data into something that you can use, um, and these are, the, in the jargon, they're called indicator uh, publications. So what we do is we get, the, we get tables and we, we write some words with them to help understand, so you can understand the data and the context of the data. And the tables um, are done in such a way that you know, we, we ban things like footnotes and all the other stuff we, which will appear in the other publications because if the data needs a footnote, it means it's not clear enough. Uh, and so what we do, we have a team of, uh, of data editors who make these publications and, um, and they're, 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 they're put out 
as, as a way of um, making data accessible to, to everyone. Uh, basically, anyone who's got a sort of high, high school um, uh, has gone been, been to high school should be able to understand the, these indicators. Um, we launched the first ones in 2001. Um, they're in print PDF in those days. Um, we launched uh, them with added Excel in, in, in about 2005 or so. And, and the XL is, is, is quite simple. We imagine you've got this publication, you've got a, uh, the, the, the chart or a table. We simply print a DOI under the chart or table. And if you either key that into your browser or you, you, you click on it, you'll get the Excel file. Uh, and it's as simple as that. Um, and and that, that um, has been very, very popular. In, uh, in 2009, we released an app. Um, I'll show you uh, some screenshots of the, of the app a bit later. Um, so this is so you can win arguments in pubs. Um, so that there you are, you're having a discussion about nuclear energy and you're arguing which country produces the, mo which country produces the most nuclear energy as a proportion of their electricity. Come on. France. France. Thank you. It's France. 85% of the electricity in France made from nuclear energy. Um, that's because they haven't got any petrol. Um, but the, the fact is that, that you can win arguments in pubs um, or or as, as, as I did, um, successfully defended European health care from a couple of people when the Obamacare bill was going through. I, I was in Boston, and there were two people discussing the Obamacare bill, and of course they didn't really want to talk to each other because they were frightened of which side they were sitting on the Obamacare fence, so they just turned on me, the European. Um, and, uh, and of course they didn't believe, it was really interesting, they didn't believe a word of what I was saying about European health care, but I pulled out the app, and they believed the app. <laughs> which I thought was a little sad, um, but there we are. Um, then we have, um, with the analogy here gets a bit straight. In a house, you have in insulation, and insulation is often made of wool. You can't see it, but you, your house doesn't, not very comfortable without it. Well, this is the, the, basically the data that goes into books, into, into academic articles. Um, basically, you can't write the book. You can't write the paper without the data. Um, and, and, of, and of course, we, ha we produce these publications as well. And in 2005, we started adding the, the Excel files to these publications. So, so again, the, 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 the charts and graphs that appear in our books, there'll be a link on, under them so that you can get the, the Excel file of the, of the, of the data. Um, and uh, so that was another service that we put in. Again, this is largely aimed at the research um, and practitioner uh, community because that's where our publications are aimed. And then this is when we get into designer fabrics. Um, it's really hard to find a designer fabric made of wool. <laughs> <laughs> but I found one. It's, <laughs> it's yeah. Um, so these, this is where things are getting a bit cool and a bit sort of interesting. I'll show you some that we're doing. They're all bespoke, but it's a bit like designer clothing. They're really expensive to make. Um, and, but we've got various tools that we've been playing with. We have a tool called Explorer, which I don't like very much, um, but it's, it's there. We have something called the Better Life Index, which I'll show you uh, uh, later because it's really rather beautiful as well as being rather cool. Um, and our Active Chart tool, which is a new tool that we've got in beta. Um, we have a thing called Data Lab that we, we launched in February this year where we pull together um, all of our experimental um, visualizations um, with the, the aim being to try and get people to react to these visualizations to say whether they, they're, they're cool, whether they're useless, and so on, to, so we can learn a bit more. Um, everything uh, we published went on a single publishing platform in 2001, um, so it's all our books, our journals, our grey literature, and our data sets. Um, so we were very early in terms of getting stuff online in a single publishing platform. Um, and uh, uh, in 2009, we launched a citation tool across the whole, whole platform. People are using it for the books, they're using it for the journals, they're using it for the working papers, they're not using it for the data, which is a, um, a problem. But I can show you that in a minute. Uh, in 2012, we started making our content shareable and embeddable. Um, so you can now embed our books into your, uh, your blogs, your websites. You don't have to ask us, you just do it. Um, and I'll show you some examples of um, some of the um, uh, shareable, embeddable tools we've got. And in 2014, um, we're hoping to launch a, a new data portal. Um, if the web works, I'm going to show you a little preview of it. Um, it's, it's, it's a wireframes, but as long as it's working, it'll give you some idea of what we're trying to build. The last time I tried to do this, it didn't work, so I'm no guarantee whether it's going to work, but I'll try. <laughs> this is our single uh, publishing platform. It's called iLibrary. Um, and it, um, I, it probably got time. I'll, 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 
actually take you to it because um, it illustrates the, the sort of, I think, the, the find um, issue. Um, so this is a platform. It has all our books, all our papers, uh, all our data, uh, and so on in it. Uh, if I go and do a search, say for part-time work, um, this sort of illustrates um, when it comes up, um, the joy of doing live demonstrations. <laughs> is it doing anything? Yeah, it is. Here we are. Here we go. So this is a, just a search. The first thing that's found is a graph in a book. Um, so what we do is we chunk up. If you end the session this morning about chunking, breaking books up, well, we, we do that. Um, so the first thing that's found is a graph. In fact, it's found many graphs um, to begin with, which are available in Excel or in our read uh, service. We go down. It's found a chapter in a book. Um, it's found more graphs and so on. And if I go down far enough, um, hopefully there's a data set. There we are. There's a data set down there. So, it, it, so from a single search, uh, you can find stuff. And why have we done this? We've done this because, in fact, users never want to look for data any more than they want to look for a book chapter or they want to look for a journal article. People aren't like that. What they want is to find an answer to the question that they have. And they couldn't care less how it's published. And so this, um, this, this publishing platform we've developed um, with, with publishing technology, um, it's, it's, I call it a stuff engine because it just publishes stuff. And we don't really care what the stuff is because the user doesn't care what the stuff is. What the user wants is the answer to their question. So if you've got a question about part-time work, you're going to be interested in all this stuff. And that's the, that's the, the whole point, um, is to put the user in control rather than publishing by sort of content silos, which don't make any sense to the, to the end user. So that's what we've tried to do here. It's, it's not easy to build because you've got to make the metadata around everything. So if I go into the, the home page for this particular data set, um, there's, the, there's the, the, the data set. And it's got DOIs. It's got ISSNs. It's got the sort of metadata that you would expect um, that a book or a journal to have because that's the only metadata schema that exists. And what we did was we simply wrapped our data sets around with metadata and we're stealing the sort of models from books and journals um, in order to be able to create this. And of course, once you've done that, you can have a button that says cite this data set and it'll actually produce a citation that you can take away and put into EndNote or any of the other citation tools um, that then works just like it would for a book uh, or, or for a journal. But what's interesting is that culturally, people aren't using it. Um, people, people don't understand yet that you can cite data just as you would um, cite a, a book or a journal article. Um, what we're going to do, um, because we can't even get our own authors to, to, to cite data properly, um, so what we're going to do, um, as the books are coming through, and our publications are coming through, we're, we're going to, ourselves, um, use the editorial team to, to create the citations and add them to the citation lists to try and seed the, the, the system um, to see whether we can start changing behavior that way. But it's, it's rather frustrating that you build all these tools and people don't use them. But there we are. Um, but anyway, that's, um, that's sort of what, what we're doing in terms of trying to um, make the data accessible in the same way as a book or a, or a journal article or, or gray literature would, would, be, would be accessible. Um, if I go into, I was telling you about the, the, the linking to, to stuff. This is, um, this is our, our fact book, which is um, uh, the, the biggest example of, the, of an indi indicator publication that we have. Um, it's, we, we put out every year, it, it's huge. It gets half a million downloads a year uh, all by itself. Um, and it's available in, 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 uh, in many different formats. So if I go into something here on total population. Um, so here's the, uh, um, that's the HTML version of it. But if I go into the PDF version of it, which is probably a better way of illustrating um, this, this linking system that we do. So here's the, um, the, the PDF. Um, so here's what the page looks like. And there's a, a, a table. Um, and there's a, this link um, underneath to, we call them stat links. And if I click on it, um, it just s simply fetches me the, uh, the Excel file. And there it is. And the user the, can just simply get, get the data, they can go away and play with it. Um, the Excel file has got all the metadata about the publication sitting here at the top. The fact it's the fact book from 2012 and so on. So that the, they've got the, 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 the bibliographic information follows the, the Excel file. 
Um, so that's um, some of the things that we're doing to try and make the publications a bit more accessible um, and I'll certainly make them more, more useful. So moving on a bit, um, various data publishing challenges. Well, what is a data set? Um, this, there is no answer to this question. Um, it's whatever you think it is, but we have big debates about what is a data set. And what we've tried to do is um, we've, we've ended up nesting uh, related data sets under data collections to try and help, uh, help, uh, help the user understand and, and navigate their way through to data. Um, but data could be anything. It could be photographs, it could be videos, it could be, frankly, anything. Um, and you can manage the stuff in any way. Supplemental data is not original data sets. Um, uh, some publishers are doing, as I've just showed you there, making links from a publication to some supplemental data that hangs off that publication. Um, and that's fine, that's, that's absolutely a good thing to do. But an original data set is an original data set and it needs to be managed in a different way because actually it's not linked to a publication. It's a publication in and of its own right and therefore it needs to exist in its own right. Um, and so we, we have these, these, these two things that we have to manage. So one is the Excel files that hang off a book or hang off a journal article and then there's the data sets that, that live in their own world and have to be managed in their own way. But of course there are links between the two because the data set um, will appear, or well, some part of it will appear as supplemental data of a book. And we're working now on a system to try and make it possible for someone to click on a data set and see all the publications that, that actually have got data from that data set. So this is something that we have in, um, in, in mind, so that you can begin to go both ways. So you should be able to start with the book and go to the, to the data set. Equally, you should be able to start with the data set and go to the book. Um, so that's something we're, we're trying to work on. Um, there's a whole issue of real-time data sets and versions of data sets. Um, so uh, our data sets tend to grow over time as, as more data comes in. So the data set just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. Um, some people say, well, that's a different version because it's got more data than last year. Um, our view is, no, it's a real-time data set. It's simply because the old data is the same. It's just got one more year's worth of new data. So the old data hasn't changed. So for us, that's not a, a new version. It is the same data set, just getting bigger. However, statisticians love to revise the data backwards. So if the statistician then wants to revise all the data going backwards in time, then that's a new version of the data set. And then we have to make two data sets. We have to keep the old one, because after all, someone cited it. They must be able to find those same numbers. And then we have to have two versions. And this is a real uh, nightmare to, to manage. Um, because you have to work very closely with the statisticians to know what they're doing inside the data set. Are they simply adding new data or are they actually changing all of the data going back in time? And we have some very uh, full and frank discussions with the, with the, with the statisticians about this because they, they, they want us to delete old data sets um, because they say, oh, we have a new one now. So the old one's out of date, so delete it. And then we have to explain that, well, actually people have cited it and therefore they need to be able to find it because otherwise you, you, you know, you, you, you break the trail in terms of, and, that, and it's, it's, it's very interesting, there's a whole new debate going on about this business of how do you manage a, a, an, old, an old data set. Um, but but we're, at the moment we're, we are doing this sort of, this idea of we allow real time to grow, but if you revise then it's a new version and then we have two versions and we have to manage the old one. Then, then there is the business of managing old retired data sets where the data is no longer being collected. And then you need to be able to say, this is a data set, it stopped at this moment in time, it's here, it's no longer, and you have to change the metadata to say it is no longer being updated. Because otherwise you get calls saying, well, why is the data set out of date? Well, it's not out of date, we just stopped collecting data on it. So you have to manage all the data set in, in, a, in, a, in a different way. And I've already mentioned citing data sets. Um, why publish uh, data? I mean, clearly it will improve the scholarly record if people can access the data. There are lots of examples where had the data been published, I mean, that, that scandal a couple of years ago about environment, environmental data, um, had they bothered to publish the data, then there would never have been a scandal. Um, so it's really important to, to get the data out there. And I, don't, I think, I mean, that attitudes are changing on that and clearly there's a huge um, change happening about um, publishing data now. And obviously it enriches the papers, enriches monographs. Um, I, I say we've been doing this business of putting links onto the charts and graphs since uh, 2005. Um, I'm, I'm really quite so surprised 
that so few other publishers are st you know have started doing it. I mean, they are beginning to you know it's beginning to happen now, but it's been very very slow, and I'm I've never understood why because it is so popular with our users. Um, we, we we deliver something like two million uh, Excel files a year um, just from the links inside our books. Um, it's a very very um, powerful um, service for um, for the for the users. Now I'm going to skip here, reaching new audiences. I'm going to skip here to our Better Life Index. Um, this is uh, uh, something we launched three years ago. Um, and the, the idea is to try and create an index that looks at the quality of life rather than the quantity of life. Um, and of course, you're, you're then delving here into the, into the realms of um, sub subjective judgment. Um, so uh, what we did was we created this index with, um, with 11 different, um, let me see if I can expand this thing out, with 11 different uh, aspects here as to sort of ingredients into what is a better life. And, um, and so the, and the idea was that we didn't want to make our own index. We wanted to empower the user so the user makes their index based on their own feeling about how important is something. So Bill. Put you on the spot here. I've got these <laughs> eleven. I, I don't see. I mustn't make these things. I was not forewarned. So, so housing, Bill. Do you think housing is really important in life, or not so important in life? Very important. Very important. Okay, so we'll put a big plus up here, and I'll move along. David, income. So it's not just yours. Otherwise, you know, you get a bit embarrassed. So we you like to income. Is that really important? Right. Middle of the road. Okay. So, so I don't know. I don't. Uh, back a bit. Back a bit. All right. There we go. So. Go on. What would, so, <laughs> so, what would you like um, on jobs? Uh, what, what, is, what is the meaning of jobs? Well, do you think having a job is the most important thing, or is it like useful, or is it absolutely essential? Uh, in your view? <laughs> in my life, it's essential. It's essential. Okay. Well, fine. We'll put it right at the top. Okay. So now, then, on community, who would like to bid on community, sir? Middle of the road. Middle of the road. Okay. All right. Education. Who'd like to? Is, is it someone here uh, on this side? Education. Hi. Education on high. Okay. Now you can see what's happening. The data is changing as we as we do the votes here. Uh, environment. Who'd like to? Someone right over there on environment. Come on in. Hi. Hi. All right. We like the environment. Okay. <laughs> Civic engagement. So this is sort of like societies. Come on. Someone from a society here will obviously put this one high. Uh, come on. Low, low? Okay, all right. All right. <laughs> health. Who'd like to bid on health? Hi. Hi. All right. We're in America. Yes. <laughs> Life satisfaction. Life satisfaction. Who, who thinks, you know, it's sort of... Well, that's a pretty broad... Okay. Well, the thing is we can go into life satisfaction and see what it, see what it means. Uh, okay. How happy you are. Okay. So... Well, you want to be happy? We want to be happy. All right. Okay. Safety. All right. Who thinks we should be safe? No, no, all right, okay. And then the work-life balance. Who like who thinks on the work-life balance? We spend all our time at work. Hi. Hi. All right, we'll put it about there. And then what we have is now, if we now rank this, we will reveal where you should. Where you, according to this, okay, we should all go and move and live in Switzerland, okay, because that that's how that works. And the last place you want to be is in Turkey. Okay. So, so you can see here that this is a, 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 a tool that, 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 that people can use. Now, what's going on also is that, that and this is where it gets cunning, uh, we're collecting all the votes in the back office, and we're feeding those back into our research so we can learn more about what real people think about quality of life to help us improve our own indicators on quality of life. So this is... I mean, the, the reason for this tool and one of the reasons for, for, for the, is actually part of our project as to how do, you, how, do you, how do you manage quality of life, which is a really difficult thing to do. So you're not just publishing it, you're collecting it. We're collecting it, yeah. Stage. So it works so both are, ways. These are individual indexes that you have yeah. because then here. Are, is it like some <coughs> sort of weighted average? Or, I mean, don't they have to, they sort of presumably have to be normalized to each other somehow? Well, the moment is just a, it's just a tool to, to get a debate going. Uh, using some of our data, but also to collect data from people, because we can actually see now, because we, we get about a million people a year using this tool, and so we, we're getting a fair amount of data now, and we can see, uh, actually what's in interesting is you can see different countries have got different ways of, of actually weighting things. 
Um, and, and so you, we're beginning to then um, sort of feed into that. But the tool is, is, is bigger and deeper than that because you know, we were talking about life satisfaction. Well, we now have, if you click on life satisfaction, there's a whole piece here that explains what life satisfaction is as far as, as far as we're concerned with links out to our publications and you can now click and read the chapter from our book on how's life um, on measuring well-being so we're using this as a tool to also draw people into our publications so that the people can do more than just simply play with the data they can actually learn more and, and dig dig deeper into uh, into what's going on and if I go back, um, and, you, and you get these, because these, these, these charts are all, I mean, th th this shows you here, you can see all the different countries. So you can see in terms of life satisfaction, um, in fact, it is Switzerland at the top, um, so that you can, you, can, you can see quickly and you, and you, can, you can compare countries. Because if, you know, if I click on one, if I hit, hit on Canada, um, I can now go into, uh, into uh, there's Canada, and here's a chapter all about Can Canada that, that we've written. And you can see here, where Canada is on, on all of the metrics. So on housing, Canada is really high because they tend to have really big houses in Canada. Um, and they've got all that space. Um, while on civic engagement, you can see Canada doesn't do quite so well. And on work-life balance, they, they don't do so well. So you can begin to, at a glance, see where Canada is on various, various metrics. And you can click another country. So here I found the United Kingdom by, by, by random, so, and suddenly then I can click across the United Kingdom. So the tool is, is navigational, it's also a way of, um, of, of getting people to, to understand more about, about different countries. So this is quite a, quite a fun sort of tool. It's, it's, as I say, it's one of our bespoke things. It's not something we can scale, um, but it's, uh, it, it's, a, it's a way of trying to, to get people to start playing with the data, engaging with the data. But the other uh, important thing is, is business about making content accessible is also available now in Russian. It's also available in French and in Spanish because not everyone speaks English. And this is, um, this is also a part of, of what we're trying to do, which is to reach out to people in their own language because this is also very important. So here, here we're, we're, we're trying to, to, to work in, in, in languages as well as make the, make the tools um, uh, engage. I love this. Patients in Russian would like translated. Nope. So, um, so anyway, that's um, that's the Better Life Index, which is a way of reaching a reaching new audience. <laughs> Data apps win arguments in pubs. Well, I was telling you the story about um, the, the Obamacare example, but this is a, a, an app. Um, it's available um, now. If you've got an iPhone, you can go to the App Store and download it. Um, it'll be available for um, iPads uh, soon and Android by the end of. Well, by mid-July, end of July, it should be available for Android. Um, and it's a, it's a new way of, um, of showing the Factbook data, which I was showing that Factbook publication. It's that publication re-engineered for, uh, for tiny screens. And, um, uh, and you can um, navigate by, by topic here. You can navigate by topic or by country. So you can go in by topic or you can go by country. And then you get the, you see the data, and then you can click through to actually see a graph, and you can begin to compare two countries. And then once you compare two countries, there's a, there's a, if you go to this, this funny little icon here, which I'm still not very happy with, um, you can, you can actually share it. So you, you can, you can send it to, to, to a friend, um, and share the data with, with a friend, or, or, or from, from the app. So that's something that, um, that exists. And if you've got an iPhone, uh, do go and download the app. It's free. Um, so, um, and we have two uh, data apps out. Well, one on one on the the sort of the internet economy, um, and the fat book. Uh, so we have two of them out there now, and we we, we hope to produce um, some more thematic ones like on development or health or education or whatever. So we have a whole family of different um, different apps. So cool stuff. Um, this is this is a this is another cool thing. Um, our charting tool. Um, Is something that that actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, I'm going to start somewhere else because it's a it's a better story. Um, okay, um, this is our main institutional website, um, and then down here we have uh, headline economic data. Uh, so you go in and um, 
there's a whole bunch of this headline economic data. So you've got the inflation rate, you've got harmonized unemployment, and so on. And you're sort of thinking of that, and you're thinking, oh, well, that's sort of a kind of interesting. We see America, we see Britain, we see Japan. And you think, Switzerland. I wonder what the unemployment rate in Switzerland is. Well, imagine that you had to go and build a chart. You know, you're working for, for the Swiss Minister for Unemployment, and you have to build a chart. And you can, you've seen that, you think, I'd love to be able to add Switzerland to that chart. Now, to go and get the data and then rebuild that chart, it would take you a while. Imagine that you could do this. You would click on a button that said Modify and Share, and it opens up a box where, by clicking, you can add in Switzerland. And there Switzerland appeared. And you don't want the, U the USA in there because you only really want European countries. So you can click America away, um, and Canada, because that's also in the wrong place. Um, but you're really interested in Luxembourg, because you're also into bank secrecy. Um, and then, oh, Japan. Sorry, I'll get rid of the Japanese. There we are. Um, but you might be interested in adding in Israel, because why not? So there you are. <laughs> there you have the, the chart. You think, oh, actually, I could do with a bigger one. So I'll click on the large box. And there's the chart. And now you've got the chart the way you want it. Well, that's cool, but wouldn't that's not right because you want to obviously share it. You want to do something with it, so you save the chart, and it opens up another toolbox where you can embed the chart in your own website or in your own blog. You can share it, and of course, you're doing a presentation for your minister. You hit PowerPoint, and it's going to make a PowerPoint slide for you. And there's a PowerPoint slide. And the PowerPoint slide comes complete with a QR code so that someone in the audience could snap it and take the data away. Isn't that fun? I'm sorry, I've lost the I've lost the browser. Where's the browser gone? Okay, um, and so I've gone into a, a different one, but it doesn't really matter because because the other fun thing is we have a button here saying stats about this chart, and if you click that button, then you can see that this particular chart has been embedded in 27 different websites, and you can even see how many times it's been viewed on the different websites. This particular one is my favorite because. It's been embedded in a, in a website called bankwars.gr, which obviously is a Greek website about, angry website about banks. And there's the chart sitting there. But what's really cool is that the user of bankwars.gr has got exactly the same functionality as appeared on their own website. So they can take the chart and change it and embed it and do what they want with it. And we can see what's going on because it's all running off our servers. Um, and this is therefore telling us a, a lot about what's going on. We, we've released, and of course, there's a link here back to the Mother Database, obviously. <laughs> so you click that blue link, and it's going to take you to, um, to the Mother Database so you knew, know where the data came from. Um, so these, this tool, so we're still, we're still in beta, um, and the other little function is that the data, obviously, is available, so you can take the data away as well. So, so basically what we've got is a, is a tool where the data sits behind the, the chart, and wherever it goes, the data follows, so that you, people can rebuild the chart um, and, and change it for, for however they want. And of course, our branding travels with it as well. Um, and then people can take away the data, and we can see what's going on. Um, we've released about 20 of these uh, since October last year. We've had half a million uh, views of these charts. So clearly, this is, is working. And, they're, and they're, they're, being, I mean, they're, they're appearing in all sorts of places. Um, they're appearing in newspapers. They're appearing uh, on blogs. Um, they're, they're appearing some some quite sort of major websites. Um, and I think, as particularly in the in the media space, a lot of um, the media space are they're cutting staff all the time. I saw that the um, the, the Chicago guys have uh, just cut all their their photographers. Um, and basically, everyone's having to cut back, which means they haven't got resources to build charts anymore. So if we give them the tool to build charts, I wonder whose charts they're going to put in their newspapers. So that's um, a way of trying to um, <coughs> trying to get our content used. So that's quite fun. 
Um, I'm not going to mention our data lab. So here's our data lab. I've been through the Better Life Index. This is this is a um, this is a kind of fun one. Um, it's called the Business Cycle Clock, um, and it's a bit sort of complex. But um, when it comes up, ooh, it's not showing anything. It could be because I'm in Explorer. Oh, here we are. Okay, what this does, these little worms. Um, you may not see that says recovery, that says expansion, that says slowdown, that says recession. This is a tool that predicts where the economy is going to go. Um, and um, if I go back to um, about 2005, it's sort of interesting because you can see that, that it was sort of bouncing around sort of between expansion and slowdown. And in 2007, uh, things begin to nosedive. We were predicting the recession before it happened with this tool. And we had this tool running then, but no one paid any attention. But it's sort of kind of interesting. But you can see that, that this, this tool is a very vis visual way of trying to, to show what's going on. And you can see it's sort of messing around the middle at the moment. The world economy doesn't look like it's going anywhere up or down. It's sort of messing around the middle. But this is a, 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 an interesting tool. Um, used, and again, and the fact now we can play it in real time, it makes it, makes it, makes makes it more fun, um, and more, more useful. But that that's a that's quite an interesting one. Um, we're tr we're playing around with maps a bit. Maps are an absolute nightmare for us, because of the territorial disputes between countries, um, and um, so we always get into trouble whenever we do maps. So we're trying to do maps without doing maps, and this is our attempt to do a map without doing a map. Um, so it's a map of the world, but without any political boundaries, and using blobs to, to show the numbers. And this is um, this is all about um, a new way of trying to measure trade. Um, if um, today in the trade figures, an iPhone that's made in in uh, in China um, and is therefore comes back to America to be sold, the full value of the iPhone goes into the trade data. So I don't know what an iPhone is worth, maybe sort of. 300 bucks or something uh, in the trade data. So there'll be like 300 plus to, to China and 300 minus to America, which means that therefore America thinks it has enormous trade uh, deficit with, um, with China. Except, of course, that 25% of the iPhone um, came from uh, value was created in America, the design, the software, and so on, which is kind of hidden in the, in the, uh, in the trade data. So we've, uh, with the World, World Trade Organization, we, this year we released a new data set called Trade and Value Added, where we're actually attributing the value um, that goes into an object. Um, and, and it's completely changed um, people's appreciation of the, the, the trade gap between countries. And so we're trying to visualize this. So ch China here and, and the, 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 the exports here, what this shows is that the, the foreign va value added is about 27% in their exports. So it's, it's not 100 coming out of China. In fact, it's only, it's only uh, 77 or something, or 73. I'm not very good at sums. But you can see here the, the, the different colors as to which countries um, are, do, are doing better. I mean, th th there's the United States. The United States actually imports very little value added. It creates most of the value added itself. Um, and, that, and that's what this, this data tries, tries to show. Ireland is deep, deep red. Um, because actually it imports a huge amount of the value added, which it then and it adds little to it before it exports. But there's a way of trying to, to show this sort of story um, in, in, a, in a way that, that is more accessible uh, to, to people. Um, and again, it, it's shareable and embeddable, these, these, these graphics. Um, I'll just take you to one more before I wrap up, because I've probably gone off for long enough. Um, this is a press release we put out. Um, last week, week before. Um, and down here, it's got a, a, a new vis visualization the Prime Minister um, showing the, the uh, economic forecast. So the blue lines there are the, the OECD average. Um, and, it, and just by um, hovering the, uh, over, you can see um, Actually, very quickly with, how certain uh, countries uh, are doing Mr. compared Johnson, to the OECD average. Uh, this is Greece, and you can see that our unemployment rate just, just our, uh, you know, taken off like a, uh, like a rocket uh, since 2009 because of, of the recession that's going and, on there. Uh, but you can see their fiscal balance, they're actually getting there. They're back up to the OECD average. 
um, and their current account balance is actually better than the OC average now, and which suggests that their Let economy is turning around. Um, the, uh, and that's, you know, you can see that uh, quite, quite easily if you just simply buy, buy, buy mousing over. There's the United States. Uh, the substance. Um, look at your hook, look so, at the current uh, account balance on the right hand side there, the well below of, uh, the OC the average, running a really by, big deficit. Uh, the um, uh, himself, but while, meantime, the unemployment rate is looking much uh, much healthier. Uh, um, so it's it's a sort of a, 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 a way of, you know, there's the UK, there's Turkey. It's a, very, a way of, of, so of, again, very simple all, tool to, uh, to try and get across to um, some, some, of the, some of the messages. Um, we have, of and again, it's shareable and embeddable because uh, this is a big thing that we're doing at the moment. But also um, from all and the you can quickly Brazil, click across to see economic India, activity and so on. So India, it's, it's all about, and we're Africa, experimenting with all sorts of different ways now of trying to make uh, the data more, is, more accessible to, to more people. So I think I'll wrap up there and take any questions. Thank you very much. Welcome to all Uh, we released our previous economic outlook and pointed to a weak recovery for the global economy. Well, today we're still confronted with an outlook that remains weak and a recovery that continues to be hesitant and uneven across countries. Oh, is it? Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, yeah. I'll get rid of all this stuff. So. I guess the only question I was going to ask is what you would tell us about how these things are actually done. I mean, you said it's magic. <laughs> <laughs> that, that's, that, that was my assumption. But, um, no, you, you said like you've done 20 of the active charts, and that implies that it's not that it's not a sort of a templated system, that there's a certain amount of work that goes into each of these that's unique. You know. Okay, well, the... the uh, um, well, the active charts, in fact, is built on a workflow that we have that makes 10,000 tables a year. Um, and the plan with the active charts is that each one of those 10,000 tables will also have an active chart. The reason why it's in beta is that we're, we're still sort of just testing that whole workflow system. Um, but the, we have a little wrinkle we haven't figured out yet is that some of the, these 10,000 tables are what are called composite tables, and therefore they can't be charted. It doesn't make any sense. And we don't have a, a metadata flag in the system that says I'm a composite chart, don't chart me. So, um, so we have to. Do, we, that's why we have to do a little, little bit of wrinkles on that. But th that's been engineered to be a mass mass produced um, project um, yeah, product, unlike the Better Life Index, which is bespoke. It's you know it, it is that that design address. Um, and I, would, I mean the, the you know we have a whole team not only working on this but maintaining it. Um, because because that's what it is, but it's, it's a big project, and but we've got you know we've got funding to, to keep it going. But it's also part of a bigger research project that the organisation's got. So yes, we desperately try and make tools that are scalable, uh, as with active charts, and and you know I'm sure by the I'm hoping by the end of the year we will actually have the active charts for 10,000 tables um, s sitting in the i library, and that will will really add value uh, to to that service. But the Better Life Index, uh, I, I you know I mean. People want more. I mean, the authors come to us and say, I want one for my, my, my project. It's like, well, how much money have you got? Um, because that, 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 that is expensive. So. Well, um, thank you so much, Toby. It was uh, really terrific. Now, for those of you who are thinking, well, go ahead. <laughs>